This video, titled The Idea of the Atom, gives a perspective of how the idea of atoms originated throughout history. So it turns out that the idea of atoms originates twice. In approximately 400 BC, Democritus speculated that matter is the smallest parts of atomos, or what we today say as atoms, and they make up everything. Over the next 2,000 years, the idea of atoms comes and goes. But in the 1800s, John Dalton is the next person to officially suggest that there are atoms. And he suggests that atoms are the smallest part of everything. And so there are other scientists throughout history who also considered the smallest parts of everything. And the first observation of atoms directly was by Robert Brown. And he is a Scottish scientist or a Scottish botanist using plant cells. So in his work, what he observed was that different plant cells wiggled around under a microscope. And throughout time, what they decided and they realized was that this motion is due to small amounts of thermal energy. And Einstein described this as Brownian motion. And so these are really the first observations of atoms today. We can observe atoms in lots of different states. And so all of this work really culminated in the atomic theory. And the atomic theory is based on three laws. The law of the conservation of mass, which states in a chemical reaction, matter is neither created nor destroyed. And so this basically says that the material that you start your reaction with must be present at the end. And so the following two laws, the law of definite proportions and the law of multiple proportions, really involve chemicals. And so what the law of definite proportions says that all samples of a given compound have the same elemental properties. This means that we can expect that cobalt chloride is the same whether it is in my research lab, in a research lab down the hall, in a research lab across the country, or one across the world. And so there are lots of practical examples of this. We expect for brand name products to be the same regardless of where they're purchased, um, specifically within one country. Now, the law of multiple proportions is a little bit more specific, and it's two elements, A and B, combine to form more than one compound. I'm going to scroll this up a little bit. The mass of B that can combine with A are found in whole numbers. Specifically, when we think about the mass of this, we are mostly referring to the moles, which we will talk about in a later video in this series. But specifically, when we think about compounds, what this, the law of multiple proportions is saying is that when B combines with A, you could get any of these compounds. What we don't typically see, particularly in Genchem or in or under this law is half of A combining with all of B. That would be indicated as 1A and 2B. So we don't see partial subscripts, which we will talk about definitely in later videos. And so together, these proportions are led to John Dalton's atomic theory. And so his laws state that each element is composed of tiny indestructible particles called atoms. 
We also know today that each atom is composed of subatomic particles that we're going to talk about in the next video in this series. He also states that all atoms of a given element have the same mass and other properties that distinguish them from atoms of other elements. Atoms, the third postulate, is that atoms combine in simple whole number ratios for compounds. This is the law of multiple proportions. And so the fourth postulate, or the fourth law, states that atoms of one element cannot change into atoms of another element. In a chemical reaction, atoms only change the way they are bound together with other atoms. This postulate is based on historical, or based on the idea that you could convert one atom into something else, that you could convert something into gold. And so this statement really clarifies that that is not possible. So these atomic theories are the basis for the understanding of the atom that we have today. In later videos in this series, we're gonna talk about subatomic particles, what makes atoms of one element distinguishable from another, but this is the historical perspective for how atoms came to be.